we were supposed to have a guest preacher this morning. I don't know whether Linda's going to bring him out here or not. But AJ was going to preach for us this morning. I don't know whether she's got the audio on back there or not. AJ was going to preach. I went back there. We had our teachers meeting last night, officer teachers meeting. And Linda made the, the announcement in the teachers meeting that she needed some help in the nursery. And we, we have pe asked people to volunteer to help in the nursery. Well, I tried to volunteer this morning, and so she gave me a test. Uh, poor little AJ was standing there behind the, the little gate. Y'all, y'all pass by the nursery, you know that there's a, a little gate there that, that guards one of the doors to keep them in, uh, keep the rowdy ones in. And he was standing behind that little little gate. And of course, AJ was still a little short, so he he looked like he was behind bars. So I, I was back there for, uh, proceeding to kind of teach him something, you know. Uh, preachers they need, need to teach their congregation something, so I decided I would teach AJ something. And I, I, I told him to, I kind of put his hands around the bars and, and told him to jiggle that thing. <laughs> so if you hear anything jiggling back there, it's AJ practicing what I talk about. I, I was, I was uh, rapidly tossed out of the nursery this morning. So. All right, while, while you're uh, uh, trying to figure out what I just said, look. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. Uh, Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to look at uh, the 19th verse. One verse of scripture. Jesus begins his ministry. And in beginning that ministry, Jesus begins to call out his disciples. And in one in this verse of scripture, we see that Jesus says this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Then he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Have you ever been asked to follow someone? And if you have been asked to follow someone, did it lead to good or to bad? Our youth were sometimes asked to follow uh, someone that uh, may not be the, of the best reputation and they fall into, into fall prey to some situation where it's really not good for them. But the one thing that I want you to look at this morning is not, to, not so much the people, but the state. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me was the words that came from Jesus' mouth when he called the folks in Galilee to leave their work and be full-time followers of me. Follow me. What would happen today if Jesus walked into your place of business where you work and issued this same call, follow me. Would we follow or would we give excuses? Some men, some of the, some of the disciples that Jesus called followed immediately. They dropped everything that they were doing and followed Jesus. Others said, let me go bury my father and my mother and take care of this and take care of that. What would you do? Jesus offers a call to every person this morning to follow him. And follow me, those words that Jesus spoke in Galilee still ring out today as he calls people to salvation and then the service. Jesus places a call on your life. And Jesus starts out by calling you first to salvation. The Bible tells us that God doesn't want anyone to perish. That God wants all to have eternal life. And the only way that eternal life is possible to us today is through Jesus Christ. Follow me. 
We need to realize, folks, that both of these calls on our life are important. I hope and pray that everyone sitting in this room this morning has heeded the call from Jesus to salvation. I hope that you have trusted in Christ as your personal Savior. I hope that you have, have, uh, have followed Him in believer's baptism. And I hope that you have, have united with a church somewhere and you are worshiping there and working there. Jesus also puts a call on our life. These men that Jesus issued that call that day, follow me, were men who were, who were fishermen. And they left it all. They went into full-time service for Christ. Not part-time, full-time. So we need to understand and we need to realize that both of these calls are important. The first thing I want you to understand about Jesus' call to follow him is that Christ's call to us or uh, to us to receive him personally. Every individual that lives or has lived is going to make a choice about what to do with Jesus. You say, I'll never make that choice. I'll never be placed in that position. But that's not true. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, somewhere down the line, somewhere during your lifetime, you're going to decide what you're going to do with Jesus. Because Jesus keeps asking, Jesus keeps uh, uh, putting forth, follow me, that call to follow me. And he does it to us repeatedly, over and over again. And we're confronted at one point in our lives where we all, all make decisions to accept or reject Jesus Christ. Christ calls to us to receive him personally. If you go back and you look at the, at the ministry of John the Baptist, and prior to uh, the baptism of Jesus, uh, John the Baptist uh, called people to repentance. But Jesus had a deeper goal. Jesus wanted to draw people to follow him and to, to receive instruction for him in doing the will of God. What is the good of repentance if, you, if you're not going to do the will of your Father in heaven? Repentance is being sorry for, for something, turning from something, and you, you, you automatically want to share it. Everybody that has, has uh, received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord needs to be willing to share the, the call of God on their life. And Jesus wanted to give instruction for that. In fact, old John knew that, uh, that Jesus was uh, the Son of God. In fact, he referred to him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And today, if, if we would serve God, we must accept Christ as our Savior. You can't serve God without accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But today, a lot of people are trying to, to do the works of Jesus without believing and receiving him personally. There's no way that you can do the works of Jesus without knowing Him in your life. If Jesus is not present in your life, there's no way you can do the works that, that Jesus has for you to do. And it is necessary for us to decide once and for all what we believe about Jesus, what we believe concerning Christ. One of the things that our, I think our folks uh, wrestle with in our society today is what are we going to do with Jesus? There's a lot of debate over, over the church. There's a lot of debate over uh, Christianity. There's a lot of debate over, over how God relates to people today, how Jesus relates to people today. But the one thing that hasn't changed is how God does relate to us. God is, God is the provider of our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we need to decide once and for all what we're going to do with Jesus. Are we going to accept him as our Savior? Or are we going to shove him aside and, and not believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of all? It becomes a personal thing. There's nothing in the Bible that, that uh, gives anyone the, the authority to, to drag someone into salvation. There's nothing in the Bible that gives anyone the authority to say you are saved. The only authority for salvation is Jesus Christ. And the only way you get to Jesus Christ is through a personal relationship in Him. It's 
It's not something that you can go buy at Walmart. It's not something that you can, can come to, to church 20 times in, in, a, in a year, or 52 times for that matter, in, in a year and, and get. It's something that is very, very personal to you. It's something that you do personally. I wish it were possible for, for me to, to come around and lay hands on every one of you. And that, that way, uh, if I had the power, I would, I would know you're saved, but I don't have that. The only power that I have is to present the Word of God to you. To present Jesus Christ and Him crucified. To present Jesus Christ and Him raised from the dead. Present Jesus Christ and His sacrifice and mercy that He adds to all. And you have to personally accept Christ as your Savior. It's a personal decision as to what you do with Jesus. The second thing I want you to see is that Christ called to us for dedication and for service. Christ issues a call to every person that accepts Him as their personal Savior to, for dedication and to service. Folks, the, as, the, as Jesus begins to move and He begins to call His disciples, the scenes kind of change a little bit and Jesus is in Galilee and He's beginning His active ministry. And the first thing a good leader does is to try to find good followers. You know, most good leaders are good leaders because they, they have good people underneath them. Did you, anybody see uh, Sunday morning this morning? Nobody saw it. They, had the, they were talking about the best places to work. Since this was Labor Day, they were talking about work. How many work in a good place? Not, not many people raised their hand. Uh, they were they were talking about uh, they, they they talked about two companies, uh, Whole Foods. Anybody know been to Whole Foods? I think they're the closest one to us, maybe in Brentwood or Franklin. But they were talking about Whole Foods and how how it was uh, kind of like a family affair. They, they, the employees uh, really liked working for them. The other one was kind of a surprise to me. How many had a radio flyer wagon when you were little? All right, now I knew we, the rest of you were deprived. Is that right? <laughs> but Radio Flyer was another company. And the employees said that, that they just love to work there. It's a, it's a family atmosphere. Jesus liked those companies. And the two things that the, uh, that the companies had in common with, in fact, uh, were uh, Whole Foods. Guess who does the hiring and firing? The employees. Hey, that's a new one, isn't it? The employees do, do, do the hiring and firing at Whole Foods. And the radio flower, flower, the, the gentleman that, that runs that operation is the great grandson or something of the family. And uh, he said that he said the best the way that a company does good is to hire good employees. You hire the best. Jesus is looking or the best. And you say, well, I'm not the best at anything. We're not. There's not a one of us that's good. But if Jesus is leading us, Jesus, Jesus is guiding us, the Holy Spirit is a part of our life, we become the best. Good Father. Folks, the fact that the disciples immediately left their nets and followed uh, Jesus indicates a couple of things. First, Jesus has a tremendous personal need. We don't run to Jesus much anymore. Is that because he doesn't have a people? I think it's because we're blind to that people. But when Jesus walked the face of the earth, 
people came to him. You know why they came to him? It's because people recognize that Jesus had the power of God resting in his life. These performers today that fill the Bridgestone Arena and fill these big venues with their, their concerts and their concerts sell out in 15 minutes, 10 minutes or whatever. They work long, hard hours. Along with a, a lot of a lot of people that never you never see to make their show the best it can be. Because they get one chance. Just think about it. If one of the top stars that, that fill the stadiums throughout the United States bobbled one night, what would happen to their career? It'd bobble along with it, wouldn't it? Jesus had the personal appeal. He didn't have to have publicity people. He didn't have to have uh, uh, people to, to style their hair and tell them what to wear, tell them what to wear. All he had to do was walk down the street and people were drawn to him because he was he had a tremendous personal appeal that drew people to him because they knew that Jesus Christ had the power of God. The second thing that we might see is uh, that, that draws people to Jesus and draws people to leave their nets and follow him was that, uh, that they had a previous experience with, with Jesus. In fact, uh, the two that Jesus called had a previous experience with, with him and Judah, and that left an imprint on them. And they were now ready to follow him wherever he would lead. Did you know you as a Christian leave an imprint on someone? You did. Do you ever let first impressions guide you? Sure you do. If you if you meet someone that's that's mean and, and rotten and low down, and they treat you like dirt, what's your first impression? Hey, I'm not going I'm not gonna deal with this person anymore. I'm not gonna deal with that person anymore. Folks, Christians leave a, leave a mark too. And I hope that every, every person that you come in contact with, that you leave a mark, a good mark, on them. Because Jesus left a mark on, on these people. It's come up a couple of times. We've been, been throwing out some things to our teachers, and, uh, and it's come up a couple of times that, that all, all you can really do is when you're in a Sunday school class or you're in a Wednesday night class or a Sunday night class, is present Jesus. That's about it. You present Him, you present Him as God's Son, you present Him as being crucified and rising again on the third day. And you never know what kind of impression that's going to lead up, leave on someone. I've known folks that have, have sat under the teaching uh, the preaching and the teaching of, of people and, and, and go out and, and just live, live bad lives. And then all of a sudden, you, you, you find them remembering something a Sunday school teacher said or, or something that was said from the pulpit one Sunday morning. And it draws them back to God. You never know what kind of an impression you leave. And Jesus calls us to service. He calls us to, to leave an imprint on those folks. Even if, even if they don't respond today, they may respond years down the road. You are planting the seed. Jesus planted the seed as well. Each call is distinct. I've had people come to me and ask me, say, well, what's it like to have Jesus Placing a call on your life. That's a hard question to answer, isn't it? 
Because each question, each call is deceiving. No two calls come from God exactly the same way. I can always remember my dad, uh, when he, he was called to salvation, he wasn't called to salvation in a church. He was called to salvation in a cedar ticket. Y'all know what a cedar ticket is? He was called to salvation in the middle of a cedar ticket. When I was called to salvation, I was called to salvation driving to, back to my home uh, from a date with Judy on Highway 53 in front of Pelham's Auto Salvage. Where were you called? Was it in a church? Was it at school? Was it at work? The call to, call to, to accept Christ it all comes at different times and in different places and in different ways for different people. No two calls from God are exactly alike. But there's one thing that all calls from God have in common, and that is you will know when God is calling. There won't be any doubt, there won't be any, any question in your mind, you will know that God is calling. When we talk about, uh, about the disciples, some of them were fishermen, some were tax collectors. That's a big difference, isn't it? Fishing and being a tax collector. The people could stomach the fishermen, but the tax collector was kind of an outcast. Why in the world would Jesus call a tax collector? Tax collectors need salvation too. Tax collectors have something to, to offer as Jesus selected the best that he could find. And when I say best that he can find, I'm talking about you. Because your call is different, because your service is different, Jesus picks you out because you have something unique to offer him. You have some unique talent that, that God is going to use as you serve and as you witness. Being a fisherman or a tax collector didn't matter. Each one of them heard the voice of Jesus in his own way and each responded in his own way. The call is to you. Jesus called. What's he calling you to do today? Is he calling you to repentance? You know, that word repentance kind of sounds, sounds bad, but that's what you have to do. You have to be sorry for, for, for the, the sinful way that you've conducted yourself. You have to know that Jesus is our Redeemer. You have to know that Jesus is our Lord. You have to know that Jesus offers mercy and forgiveness. And we have to be sorry for the way that we've acted in the past and let Jesus change our lives. You can't change it. You can't change a thing. Jesus can. And Jesus calls us to repentance. He, he gives us the, 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 the call that you need to just say, Lord Jesus, it's all yours. In fact, that's what those two fishermen did that day. They left their nets and followed Jesus. They said, Jesus, it's all yours. Now, tax collector or fisherman, it doesn't matter. We respond in our own way. And someone asked me one day, said, well, preacher, how, how am I supposed to come to God in my Am I supposed to come laughing? Am I supposed to come crying? Am I supposed to, how am I supposed to come? Well, different people come different ways. I've seen people who, who just boo-hooed all the way down the aisle. And, and they, they did it because that, that was just their nature. That was their nature and God had called them. Jesus had, had put a call on their life. And, and they were they were so overwhelmed with emotion that, that they, they just cried all the way to the altar. 
But they weren't tears of sorrow, they were tears of joy. I've had people come to come down the, the aisle with the biggest grin on their face. And some people might look at them and say, well, well that's kind of sacrilegious. This is, a, this is an important thing that's happening. They shouldn't have a grin on their face. Well, hey, you think about it. You've just been rescued from the, the mire of sin, from, from the, the pits of hell. Isn't that a good time to grin? Isn't that a good time to have a have a happy attitude? I remember, and I, I may have told you this before, but on our senior trip, we went to uh, Panama City, Florida, and uh, no one no one knew that I couldn't swim. I still can't swim. I hate water. I take showers. I don't get in the bathtub. <laughs> but anyway, they didn't know I couldn't swim. I was walking by the pool and somebody pushed me in the pool. Now, you know, being my luck, I didn't go in the shallow end. I went in the deep end. And one of uh, my classmates, in fact, he just passed away not too long ago. He saw what had happened and he, that, he dove in and pulled me out. And I was very grateful to him for jerking me out of that pool. I was so grateful to him that, that when, he, when he got out, he had claw marks on his face and on his arm. You know, people who are drowning fight. He had claw marks on his face and arm. So I was, I got out and I was very grateful to him. And I headed back to the room. Hey, I didn't make it back to the room. Guess what happened? Somebody else pushed me in the pool. Not in the shallow end, back in that deep end. He saw what happened, the same, same individual saw what happened. He pulled me out the second time. I added a few claw marks to him too. But I was very grateful to be out of that pool. This time he escorted me back to the room. <laughs> but you never know how grateful you are to someone until you experience that salvation. Being pulled from, from the, I don't know whether these are good words, the jaws of death. Being literally pulled from the jaws of death, you are grateful. And God uses Jesus to pull us from the jaws of death. <clears throat> He saves us. God's call to us is to respond as Jesus lifts us out of the quagmire of sin. Folks, God's call also comes constantly. And we can reject the call, but we can't ignore it. I've had people tell me that I... And they never used the word reject. They always always did use that term ignore. I had, had one person tell me that I've ignored the call of Jesus on my life for, for 10, 15 years. Jesus issues a call to every one of us. And let me tell you something. You need to remember that indecision, no decision, is a form of refusal. If you don't make a decision, that's refusing. Yet God remains ever pleading for us to come to Him, come to Christ, and accept His will for our lives. Folks, the first call comes to everyone for the same purpose. And that purpose is salvation. Each one of us needs to be saved from our sins and become a new creature in Christ. We all need to be saved. We're in that deep end of that pool and we can't swim. And Jesus is the only one that can pull us out. He already has the scratch marks on, on his face and his, and his body. He has the nail holes in his hands and his feet. As we flail around trying to fight him off. But he's there reaching for us every day. 
we need to be saved from our sins and become a new creature in Christ. And the second call is, is made to service. Folks, God's called some people into full-time Christian work. Others are called to just be full-time Christians. Some of the best work that people do for the, in the service of God, in the service of Christ, in the service of the church, is to sit in the pew and pray. Prayer warriors. Prayer warriors who are willing to get down to the, to the duty of just asking God to bless other people. We're called to service. We're called to salvation. But let it be known that we're all called. Then he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus' call on our life is very simple. If you follow him, he will call you to be fishers of men, to bring others to know him as their personal Savior. This world needs Jesus. That's kind of an understatement. Every day that, that we live, we see the the, the chaos that's around us and we understand that the world needs Jesus. And the only way the world will get Jesus is through people who are willing to answer the call to service. Come and follow me. You say, well, I can't make a difference. Yes, you can. One person can make a difference. The goal in anything is to win that one person that's lost. And because your call, the call on your life is so unique that you have someone out there that maybe only you can reach. And when you reject Jesus as Savior and Lord, guess what? That other person is being deprived of an encounter with Christ. You may be the, as they say, you may be the only Bible that some folks read. And Jesus is calling us to be his Bible wherever we go. If you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to seriously consider God's call on your life. He's making a call on your life for repentance, for salvation. And all you have to do is just say, Yes. Just say yes. Christian, God's call on your life is to service. And if you're pushing him aside and saying, God, I, I can't do this, God never, God never gives us a, a task that we can't do if we just let him live. There's not a task that we can't do. God will give you what you need. To serve God will take care of you. All we have to do is answer the call. I hope we're like, like those two fishermen that dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Heavenly Father, help each one of us this morning to recognize this call in our life. Whether that call is for salvation this morning, whether that call is for service, Heavenly Father, just give us the courage and the wisdom and the desire to say yes, Lord. Father, we think it's it's hard, but it's not. The men that we read about who Jesus called put down their, their task and followed him. Help us to put down our task and follow Jesus. Father, help us to accept the call that he that Jesus has on our life this morning. Help us to move forward with courage and conviction, 
Jesus Christ is Lord. We can do all things through Him because He strengthens us each day. Father, I pray that as we offer this invitation this morning, if there's someone here that, that needs to respond, that they'll have the courage today to just let Jesus lead. Just let Jesus be Lord of their life. Heavenly Father, we use this invitation for your honor and your glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If God has put a call on your life this morning and you just want to come and talk about it, we'd be glad to talk with you. If you want to come and pray about it, we ask you to do that as well. You want to come and let this church know that you've answered that call. You said yes, Lord. We'd like to really be that. We'd like to rejoice with, with you in that. But whatever it is, if you feel the need that you need to come this morning, 